So fresh off the boat from China, we have some more budget lithium iron phosphate batteries. And as always, we have a goofy name. These ones, I don't even know how to say it. It's called the Vatterer? Vatterer? Vatterer. Vatterer? But these things in the last few months are getting pretty cheap. They're about $800 to $950. And there's quite a few options now. Just for the cheapest EG4 server rack battery, it's $1,200. But these for 100 amp hours with the same capacity are only $940. But the eco-worthy server rack battery is $800, but there's different features. And currently it seems like the biggest competition is between these because this one has a screen and this one doesn't, but this one has communication and this one doesn't. So depending on what matters most to you will determine which one you'll choose. But they both have Bluetooth and a lot of you guys probably don't need to spend $100 just for a screen. Also, there's a significant size difference. Look at how thin this one is and look at how tall this one is. And for the last few weeks, I've been testing both of these. So we're gonna review the Vatter and see how it compares. Now, first thing I noticed between these two batteries is this one says 100 amp hours and then this one says 100 amps. Technically, they're both right because they both have 100 amp hours and they can both charge and discharge with 100 amps, but it's pretty funny that they messed that up. Next, we have some shipping damage, unfortunately. With these large batteries, this is pretty common. If you don't ship them on a pallet, they get damaged, especially when the terminals protrude this far. This is what's gonna take the impact, not the handles, like on the EcoWorthy. This is a better design. The handle actually protects the terminals and everything else. And it comes with a piece of foam that's really strong and it fits right on the front. And where the damage occurred is around the terminals. So the moment these things get hit, this whole thing bends. And it also damages the seal on top. This is all bent as well. Next issue is the terminals. I don't think they're tight on the other side. I didn't strip the threads. I didn't use an impact gun or anything, but you can keep tightening it past that point. Next, these screws are a little loose. So it's a good idea to tighten them all down when you get the battery. But look at how many times I can rotate this thing. Like all of them are loose. This side's not as loose, but this is the banged up one. So there's probably tension on these things. Now to turn it on, you flip this breaker and you press the on button. And then it will tell you the state of charge, how much current is going in or out, the nominal pack voltage and the temperature. I really like that. It even shows you time to empty. So if you put a draw on this and you will be empty in five hours, it will tell you. Now on page two, it will show you if the charge or discharge is connected or disconnected. This one I only tested one time, so it shows there's only two cycles on here. Then we have the remaining capacity, which we actually get more than that. And if there's an error code, it will tell you right here. And then on page three, we get the cell voltages. Now look at the cell voltage differential. This is better than the eco-worthy. We're only off by 0.01. And this is at 100% state of charge. So this is better than a lot of EG4 and EcoWorthy batteries, which is crazy. Now let's look at the other battery. Now this battery is also at 100%. I've done multiple cycles, especially high C rate testing. And look at these cell voltages. And it's the same as the first battery, 0.01 volt deviation. And again, this is better than the EG4s and the EcoWorthy. This is what you want to see when your battery is fully charged. Now, the capacity test results that I got for both of these was incredible and consistent. I had four EcoWorthy batteries and all of my results were completely different. And then the latest EG4 server rack battery, I can't even pull the advertised capacity. And I'm still testing that to this day. And I still haven't been able to pull it. The first capacity test was this battery with a CBA5 Pro with 3 amps and I got 105.7 amp hours. It took a long time but I wanted some consistency, I wanted to graph it out to see the curve and everything looked fantastic and it actually pulled more than the EG4 and the EcoWorthy on the first try. Next test was a 0.2C rate, so a five hour rate for both of these, and they both pulled 105 amp hours. Both were at the same temperature, the same rate, and they pulled the same capacity, exactly. Next, after I tested the other server rack batteries at a high rate, I thought, hey, why not test this one? Let's pull 100 amps for an hour and see what we get. 
So I charged this thing with 100 amps and I discharged with 100 amps and I got 104 amp hours, which is the best result out of all the server rack batteries I've tested so far. But going by these cell voltages, it makes sense. Everything actually works as advertised. Now, something we realize is on the more fancy server rack BMS with the communication, it has a coolant meter and it cycles it with 100 amp hours available no matter what. This one is different. This one instead uses voltage to determine the cutoff threshold, which is totally fine, it doesn't hurt anything, and the capacity figures are consistent every single time. Which personally, I like that because I test multiple batteries, I get the same number every single time, I like that. When I'm testing the Eco-Worthy and it gives me 104, 98, 101, 99, it pisses me off, I don't like that. For most of my tests, I like to get it within 0.1 amp hours every single time. If it's not, I feel like something's wrong. So now we can open this thing up and see what's inside. These are locking nuts, that's nice. This, I think this is better than the Eco-Worthy. Look at what we have here. On the Eco-Worthy, they have flat bus bars that do not allow for expansion and contraction. These actually have them. Next, we have locking nuts on every single terminal. Next, there's padding between the cells, and then there's plastic cell holders, and then steel bars, steel case, no open air like the Eco-Worthy cells. Really, this is overkill. I don't think I've seen one with this much support around the cells. This is ridiculous. And in this channel, there's holes for the overpressure relief valves. The screws and nuts are marked. These are glued. Everything up here is glued. It's really nice. Now this is a JBD BMS and it's very common and you can either use their app or you can use the JBD app. And this is the same BMS that overkill solar cells. So a lot of DIY packs have the same BMS as this. And I've built lots of packs. I have like a box of those things and I've never broken one. So these are fantastic, very reliable and lots of people use them. And I think the Vadier app looks better than the JBD app. This is nice. I think the colors they use in the marketing materials and also the case looks very good. I think they're doing that right. You just need a better name, honestly. <laughs> now the connections to the circuit breaker, there's no ferrules, but they glued it. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure if I like that or dislike it. Terminals on these breakers have temperature ratings and adding it with an insulative material like a glue is not a good idea in my opinion. Next, the screen is powered with a non-fuse conductor. As long as it's in the case, it's okay, but I don't like it on the main terminal like that. Having a small inline fuse would be preferable. Now this is glued and it looks waterproof, but nothing else is. Something else I noticed is this is the only other server rack besides the SOK that's serviceable. Because these are not welded terminals with the bus bars, that means you can remove all this stuff, which people are realizing they're not actually doing. If you have a warranty claim with this, you have to ship the whole battery back. And that's why most of them are welded. It's cheaper just to make it that way. It has a really solid connection. You don't have to worry about the worker torquing this properly or not. And you'll have to replace the whole pack anyways. So might as well have it welded. But some people disagree with me and they wanna work on their batteries. If you can get these cells, and are able to swap them out, then that would be pretty cool in the future if something were to go wrong. Now this BMS is very reliable and very simple, but it lacks features like communication. Also, that BMS has four temperature sensors on the cells, this only has one. And then there's another one for the ambient temperature and this is connected to the case, but the one that matters most is what's connected to the cells. And in theory, this one would trigger first and then as it's warming up, this one would trigger second. That way, if your cells are super cold and they're not thawed out yet, you still have this one to protect your cells, even if this one heated up first. I hope that made sense. But overall, pretty impressive. I do like JBD BMSs. Also, all my systems I run without communication. Even my large one with the 12,000 XP, there's no communication. And this build quality for the price is very good. So I would consider this. And all of my test was better than all the other server rack batteries. So I like this one, but it's not for everyone. Also, it's not UL listed. So guess what that means? If you want to permit your install with like an 18 KPV, you can't do it with this battery. It has to be certified listed and on the approved list for California and everything else. But if you're building an off-grid system, this is fantastic, I think. 
but check for shipping damage. There's nothing here that can really go wrong and also tighten all of this stuff down. But on the inside, everything's fantastic. And after this video, I'm pretty sure they're gonna improve all of this stuff. So pretty surprising results. When I first got this, I thought it looked cheaper than the other ones and I thought it wasn't gonna do as well, but it turned out that it did better than all the others. So if you have a strictly off-grid system, I would give it a try. If you already have a system, you can always buy an extra battery and connect it to your system. Now, if you have any problems with this battery, please let me know either in the comments section or on the form. Also on the form, I have updated it. And there's a whole new section for news and promotional content. Before yesterday, this was strictly forbidden from the forum, but some people wanted it. Some people wanted the companies to give updates. They want to see what they're doing. They want inside information. So I thought, hey, we need to have a section for these people. And we even have an industry news, politics and future regulations for solar, new product announcements. If you have a press release, a solar installer finder. So if you're trying to find someone to install your system, we've got that there. We've got a place where you can post online deals and you can share anything you want and now companies can as well. And then if you hate a company and you've had a lot of problems and you have evidence of these problems, you can post it in the vendor review corner. So check it out. The forum is still growing like crazy. We have almost 130,000 members. It's free for everyone. And if you're a YouTuber or a business, you can talk to people right here. You cannot promote in the other areas. We do not want corporations rambling about their products in the rest of the forum. That would be horrible. But in this small little section, you can actually do it now. And I think a lot of people are gonna like that. And that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know what you think down below and please check out the forum. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.